Hello and welcome to another episode of Podcast DX, the show that brings you interviews with people just like you, whose lives were forever changed by a medical diagnosis. I'm Lita. I'm Ron. And I'm Jean Marie. Collectively, we're the hosts of Podcast DX. On today's show, we're talking with Jennifer Kraft about spinal cord injuries. Jenny is a high school chemistry teacher at Garcia High School in Chicago, Illinois. She had a biking accident five years ago that left her paralyzed, and she's sharing her story of recovery and resilience. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, Jenny. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm excited to share my journey with others. That's great. Hi, Jenny. This is Jean Marie. Um, could you start us off by telling us more about your injury? Um, yeah, so it happened in April in 2014. Um, I was biking actually up from Hyde Park to downtown okay. uh, Chicago. Mm-hmm. And my accident happened. I was on the Lakeshore Trail, and then it kind of led into the breakwater wall. So those big concrete resentments. Right. So I was riding my bike on top of those. And Ooh. the next thing I knew, yeah, it was it was just a crazy, actually, I thought that was my safest way home, was to take the bike trail. So um, the next thing I knew, I actually landed on my helmet. My helmet shattered. I fractured three vertebrae in my neck. I broke Ooh. both my shoulder blades. And then I got paralyzed at the T4, T5, which is about at the bottom of the rib cage. Mm-hmm. Um, um, at the time, uh, I had no idea what I fell off of. I was like totally like out of it. Uh, I was really lucky, though. I was actually able to, I had my cell phone on me. Oh, that's good. Um, yeah. So, um, so I was actually able to call 911 myself. Um, I did at the time, I kind of felt like my legs were like floating in the air. Um, So I knew like I was in like bad shape and I couldn't move at all. Um, So I called 911. Um, They couldn't find me. It was hard to find me because I was like down by the lake. Um, Like I could see the lake uh, right next to me. So I was trying to, and when you're biking, you're not really sure exactly where you're at. Right. So, um, so then, um, they were able, uh, to find me, but it took them like, it took them like 30 minutes to find me. Oh, uh, they had traced, uh, yeah, they had traced the phone call. Um, I was actually, I, get, I ended up getting on the phone with my ex-boyfriend at the time. He, uh, he reached out to all of my family. Um, my youngest brother, he was at Northwestern, uh, when I arrived. But uh, later on, I actually realized that I fell nine feet. Oh. Um, so um, I should have died or I should have been quadriplegic. So I honestly feel extremely blessed mm-hmm. um, to have just become like a paraplegic. So I have full use of my arms still. Okay. Okay. Wow. That was, uh, that's an amazing, that's a, <laughs> the injuries were extensive. Now you say that you, you fractured your, neck your vertebrae in your neck however the paralysis was at at the thoracic area uh how did that area also get injured or was that from the the shoulder blades right and and when did you first learn exactly what the extent of your injuries were um so uh, the main thing so the vertebrae in my neck were just like a little bit fractured so i didn't okay. break them all the okay. way so that's why the, the spinal cord wasn't injured okay um so that's why um so then how i got paralyzed at like t4 t5 that's where i had uh the compression of the spinal cord happened at that t4 t5 oh, okay. level okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right so yeah then, a, hel- a helmet won't help you down there huh? no yeah yeah so, I mean, I really learned um, about the extent of my injuries. I really learned, like, kind of two days later. I, it was It's kind of interesting because your body goes into shock. So, mm-hmm. I didn't really get the pain um, until I got to the emergency room. And then that's when I really started feeling the pain from the accident. Okay. Uh, so, I, mean, uh, I went through, like, a 12-hour uh, surgery. I woke up. Uh, probably like, you know, you had to have these morphine like pumps, Mm -hmm. like you get to hit it every 30 minutes. So I was on that for a while. So to be honest, I was super out of it for at least like almost a whole week. Um, yeah, so I didn't really understand, um, my injury until probably about a week later. Uh, and then like at that time I realized that, 
um, I, I couldn't sit up. I couldn't dress myself. I couldn't roll over. Um, I couldn't go pee or go to the restroom by myself. I had no sensation mm-hmm. from that T4, uh, T5, like all the way down. All the way down to, yeah, so I couldn't move and I also couldn't feel any parts of my body all the way down. Um, we understand that uh, spinal cord injury can be devastating and, uh, you know, spinal cord does so much in a, a person's body. It, it takes care of so many different things. So what do you think the, the part of the central nervous system that was injured, what do you think is the worst part of well, your injury? I wouldn't injury? say the worst. The... Well, the, the one that has the biggest impact on your life. Okay. Uh, well, I think, uh, for me, it's like, right. The, the main thing is, is my body can't communicate right now. So my brain isn't communicating. As soon as it hits that T4, T5, it can't communicate with the rest of my body. Okay. So like, so like, obviously like my, uh, my heart's still beating. Anything that is involuntary still works. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So anything that is like needs to come from my brain, from the central nervous system, like I need to like tell my leg to like run or I need to uh like release my bladder to go to the bathroom okay so anything Um, that yeah anything that you have to do that's below that spot right yeah exactly so that's that's the struggle is that I can't anything that I used to be able to control from that part down I can't control or I also don't have sensation so like for example if somebody stabbed me in the leg Mm -hmm. I wouldn't actually feel it Wow. uh, I would yeah I would get probably some like headache because I get it's called autonomic dysreflexia Mm -hmm. which means that there's something going on below my injury so for me it uh it causes headaches it kind of Different people get different sensations, uh, but I'll get like a, a really bad headache and then I'll know something's going on. So if I have a urinary tract infection, um, for me, I actually do feel a little bit of burning, um, but I'll also have like these headaches. Okay. So I'll know okay. that something's going on. Okay. Yeah, you can tell that you're a teacher because you, <laughs> you can explain things in a very eloquent and clear cut <laughs> way. Um, were you very active prior to your injuries? Yeah, so I actually, I played uh, college soccer up at Aurora University in the suburbs, mm-hmm. and, like, I'm a, I've always been extremely active. Like, I, I love biking and running and uh, doing anything active, and being outside was, like, the thing I did. Right before my accident, me and my ex-boyfriend actually traveled, like, 17 national parks in one month, like, wow. camping and biking. Oh, wow, yeah, you were definitely... Yeah. Now, ha- have you been able to get back into that a little bit, or? Well, well what I love is in, um, is that there's so many organizations in Chicago that just offer so many free things. Um, Dare, to, Dare to Try, I did a triathlon uh, with them. They do free training. Um, and um, I do hand cycling now, which is, like, one of my passions. Um, I learned how to swim again. Um, I've kind of done a little camping. We're still kind of working that out with me and my, my, me and my fiance. Oh no. So, okay. So now there's a fiance. Very good. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So I met, uh, and dating can be, um, definitely another thing to kind of get over. Like you're in kind of a different body. You learn to like, you have to really learn to communicate really effectively. Um, which, I, I mean, you can kind of get away with stuff, I think, when you're not in this condition. <laughs> um, so um, I met him. Uh, he's actually, uh, he he's in India, but we've been able to make an amazing relationship. I've been to India three times. Oh, nice. Been here three times. So he's super supportive of my recovery and um, my growth through this whole process. Okay. I, that's one of our, on our um, bucket list, his uh, trip to India for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right, you guys can come, come, come to my wedding. Oh, oh wow. that, would, that would be amazing. We've had um, a couple of Indian weddings. Yeah, and, in I've, and I've been following a, uh, a guy on Facebook that is a, uh, he's like a, an instructor for yoga and, I mean, like intense yoga. Mm. Oh, and he I'm, actually yeah, takes people to India for, for you, retreats. Yoga. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, okay. I wanted to go to that. Mm-hmm. Jenny, I'm just going to jump back a little bit. Did you say you went to Aurora University? I think yes, I did. Oh, 
Oh, Amazing. So did oh, we. Boy. <laughs> I'm looking right at Lita right now. We're both alums from AU as well in and TR. And it's the, the Fighting Tadpoles? Exactly. Is that right? Okay. Uh, Tadpoles. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I graduated in 02 from there. We I may have no seen you. We were like 98, 99, 99, 99 yeah. something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, we were a little bit before you. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah they both got their masters from A Aurora. little bit more um, like wine aged than yes. you are. So, a yeah. wine aged. <laughs> there you go. Hey, can you do us a favor and explain to the listeners out there the different types of spinal cord injuries that people may get? Yeah. Um, so there's uh, there's a lot of different types. So there is complete and complete. Um, so the complete uh, paralysis means that uh, it's a feeling and all ability and control is like totally lost below the area of injury. So like for mine, for example, um, if I had no feeling or sensation below my T4, T5, mm-hmm. I would be considered complete. So I'm considered incomplete because I have a little bit of um, what is it called? Uh, contraction of like the anus sphincter. Okay. So that's like one of the things that they test. So mm-hmm. if you have any kind of movement or control below the level, then you're considered incomplete. Okay. But you're um, still a com- so- you're still complete. I don't like that term at all. Oh. Well, oh, I know it's, it's yeah. not she. It's not no. she's incomplete okay. or complete. It's okay. the injury. injury. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So and then and then like I have a theory that they tell everybody in the beginning that they're complete. Just uh, it's just depressing. And so then I had them retest me actually because they do this thing called Asia testing where they go all along your body and they'll do like little pin pricks mm-hmm. and then they'll do like little soft uh, like cotton. Mm-hmm. I think that. I don't like the test at all. I think it's very inconclusive. Sure. Um, uh, so I, I think that they have a they have a lot to go when it comes to medicine and it comes to spinal cord injuries. I think that they should stop <laughs> categorizing people complete or incomplete because mm-hmm. I know a lot of people that have gotten re- a lot of return back, mm-hmm. even when they say that they're like complete. Um, I know that the body wants to heal and like, we, even when they said to me in the beginning that, oh, you're never going to walk again, you're complete. I was like, whatever, you don't know anything. <laughs> oh, good like, for you. you yeah. I was all like, I was all like, you don't know my body. I've been with it, you know, for 34 years. I got this. Like, let me try. Right, <laughs> right. You know? Well, I'm, I'm glad you were able to advocate for your, er, yeah. Ad- advocate for yourself. For yourself, yeah. yeah. You um, belong to the Shirley Ryan Ability Lab, right? Yeah. Yeah, and they have been ranked number one in rehab medicine for I think it's twenty eight years straight. So if anybody can get people to walk again, it's going to be that place. Right, and maybe a functional MRI while they're doing the testing might be helpful because it could actually show which parts of the brain are right that the brain is actually activating with sensation. Rather than, I mean, because I'm sure that test has to be extraordinarily stressful because you want to feel, and it, I just can't even imagine the stress that would put on you. But yeah, once again, thrilled that you ad- were able to advocate for yourself. Yes. Yeah, and I think that's a huge thing with people with disabilities. Like, if you don't advocate for yourself, and I, ha- I was, I've been very blessed. I've had, like, I, we had to fight tooth and nail to be able to go to Shirley Ryan because I had an HMO at the time and they did not want to pay for Shirley Ryan. Oh, wow. They wanted to go to one. Yeah, they wanted my best friend. I don't even know what she did because I was out of it, to be honest. Mm-hmm. But she found some way to make sure that I was at Shirley Ryan for three months. Oh, uh, wow. before I left there mm-hmm. and I was extremely blessed to be there for my rehab um, mm-hmm. I was in really good shape by the time I left there I was able to do like my bowel and bladder program myself I was able to like dress I mean it was me taking a lot of initiative too because I knew that when I went home uh, the only person that was going to be able to stay with me was my brother so, I mean, I'm not, he's, not, he's not helping me dress or do anything. Right, personal. right, right. I had to make sure I can make that happen, you right, know? Right, right. So. And, and um, yeah, there. what surgical procedures have you had to help correct the spinal cord injury and other damage that you sustained? I mean, even the shoulder blades, did you have to have anything to help um, repair that breakage? Uh, yeah, so unfortunately, there's not anything they can do with the shoulder blades. Uh, that's why I was in, usually you're out of rehab within like a month or two. You usually don't stay in there for three months. 
but my shoulder blades, they have to heal on their own. Oh. So I had a lot of restrictions about bending for at least almost the first two months. Oh, um, I, 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 I mean, I can't even, here's, yeah. here's, you know what just hit me? <laughs> so you have shoulder blade injuries, severe shoulder. I mean, those are big bones. Mm -hmm. to, so yeah. if you fracture those, right? And now you don't have the use of your lower body because of the T4 injuries. So that means you've got to make up for the lower body by using your upper body strength. And you're trying to use your upper body strength but you're with two broken yeah, shoulder blades. I mean, that's like a double whammy. It is. It sounds, yeah. Yeah, it's a bit intense. I was on a lot of pain meds. I bet. Okay. I bet. Okay. Thank God. Yeah, for surgeries, though, um, they did fuse together uh, T3 to, to uh, T8, the, oh, so wow. the thoracic vertebrae of the third through the eighth. Okay. So that happened the day of my accident. Oh, okay. wow. So I was okay. in surgery for 12 hours. Okay. And that's a long time. Yeah, it's like rods. They kind of put right. them back mm -hmm. right. and hold it together. And oh, it, wow. it probably helped stretch it out a little bit because you said that it was a compression injury. Right. So now the the spinal cord has a little bit more space to move where back to where it belongs or stretch a little bit rather than being compressed, compressed. and staying yeah. compressed. Mm -hmm. So that's a good that's a good surgery. Uh, and what what um, hospital were you at for that procedure? Northwestern, I think. Uh, North, Northwestern. Okay. Thank God they took me like directly to Northwestern. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so a very good blessing as well. Very yeah. good hospital. They have, yeah, they have some wonderful neurosurgeons there. Yeah, I. Yeah. Uh, I, just as an aside, my, my mom fell off a horse when she was uh, in Michigan. She was like, oh my God, she was probably in her 60s. Fell off a horse and injured her lower back. And <laughs> because they were out in like farmland, they loaded her in the back of a pickup truck and drove her to the nearest hospital. Yeah. And I'm thinking, oh my God. That's a rough ride. God. I mean, you know, so the differences between being somewhere close to a really good hospital and having yeah. an ambulance transport you, mm -hmm. and uh, and being out in the so you did have a lot going for you, right. uh, which is good. I mean, I'm not gonna. Oh, I, I try to find the good in anybody's illness or injury. So you had a lot going for you. Oh yeah, definitely. I've had a lot of blessings throughout my recovery, mm -hmm. no doubt. Yeah. Uh, can I ask you how has the level of the injury affected your life since the accident? Uh, you're a chemistry teacher. And now you've got, uh, you know, some problems that you never had before. So how is that? How are you adjusting to that? Um, you know, in the beginning, honestly, um, my youngest brother was like, he asked my mom, he was, uh, he's like, mom, why isn't Jenny more depressed? I, I can't believe that she's not depressed. And I mean, honestly, I was just trying to survive. I was like, all right, how can I put my clothes on? Um, how can I learn to catheterize? How can I learn to do my bowel plug program? Mm -hmm. I was just like super, super focused on just like basic survival in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I think that's really what I focused on when I was at the hospital. And then um, as, uh, I mean, I was a chemistry teacher. I had only been teaching for two years. Oh. Actually, this was, so I taught my first year. I kind of started teaching as it's kind of my second career. And so I was in the first half of my second year of teaching, and I finally felt like I could kind of teach because <laughs> my first year was a hot mess. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so, and then it happened like right after the and like the love that I felt from all the students and all of that. Like I just wanted to get back to teaching. So that was also like a huge driver for me okay. um, to find my stability and get back to what I love. So I really do love teaching. It just really gives me a quality of life. Um, so that was a huge driver for me. Um, also, a lot of things that affected my life is like I couldn't drive. I couldn't um, um, like friendships and dating were kind of everything was different, you know. I couldn't like sure. go out with my friends at night, like especially with the catheterizing in the beginning. Like uh, as as a woman, like it's extremely difficult to catheterize in public areas. So that means I can't be out of my house for more than like four hours at a mm -hmm. time because then I need to come home and like get in a bed and you have to like take your pants off all the way so then you can self-cath and it's just like a huge process 
Uh, so there was just a lot of challenges that I needed to get over um, just to try to go back to work. Okay. So some, some of, a lot of it had to do with strength building as well, of course. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Oh, sure, sure. Um, and now, since um, your first major procedure, have you had any additional treatments or procedures to help um, repair the damage? Um, so, actually, just in November, um, I got some stem cells. Okay. Um, okay. So, yeah, so um, I got stem cells. Be- and honestly, like, I had a lot of friends that were getting stem cells. They were going to, like, Panama. They were going to Germany. And, like, nothing was happening. So I finally ran to a friend who he had gotten stem cells in um, Wisconsin and, and or no, Minnesota, sorry, not Wisconsin, in Minnesota, and his kind of paid off. Like, he got a, a little bit of movement, and I was like, all right, so now let's try this. And so I went up to Minnesota uh, in November, right before Thanksgiving, and I got the stem cells. So it was very non-invasive, like, it's all injections. Okay. Uh, the stem cells, they came from me. Um, all of the blood that they pulled out, everything came from me, and they just put it back into me. Right. Okay. So with with needles. Mm-hmm. So um, I, I had to pay for it out of pocket. Um, but since then, I've gotten, like, a lot stronger. I've been able to uh, transfer to, like, acupuncture tables, and I'm able to undress myself. Because the problem with those tables, I can undress and dress myself. Mm-hmm. But because they're so narrow, oh, yeah, it, yeah. it can be a little challenging. But now I'm so strong that it doesn't even matter. I can do all that stuff myself now. And that's just from the stem cells. Wow. My, that's fantastic. Uh, yeah. What, what, I just have a question. Was that at Mayo Clinic in Minnesota? No, it wasn't. It was through a ju- Reju Medical. Okay. Uh, it's a place uh, near kind of Mayo. Yeah. And you said it was so, not covered. They, yeah, it was not covered by the insurance. It was about uh, $10,000. Oh. Wow. And, and with everything else so, going on, I mean, your finances must have really taken a hit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, you know, I mean, the finances really took a hit, but, man, I'm so blessed I got to go back to work. Yeah. I mean, I can't... My, my life is like a thousand times better than most people. I have the best insurance that anybody could ever imagine. My insurance pays for everything. Um, I got uh, this electrical stimulation bike. It's called a functional electrical stimulation bike, which um, actually activates the muscles like right, in my right, leg. Right. Mm-hmm. So I I use that almost every other day. Um, they pay for everything. I mean, I just I have a uh copay or not copay co-insurance was like 1200 a year mm-hmm. so i mean my finances i mean they were a struggle until i went back to work but i make i make decent money as a teacher i really can't complain um obviously i'm spending a lot of money out on my recovery sure but i've also been ex- extremely blessed like people have donated a lot of money to me I've already gotten seven thousand dollars back for my stem cells through a fundraiser that I did. Right, I saw well, that. That's so, fantastic. Yeah, it. Uh, yeah, the GoFundmes are are great for people that are stuck in situations like this because mm-hmm. it's it's things that you just don't expect, and and no one can handle it, you know that kind of a hit all of a sudden you right. know that or a, a fun- yeah. or a funeral expenses for a young family or, mm-hmm. or a fire you know right. exactly yeah yeah. yeah. Um, so, Je- so Jenny, um, what do you think has been the most helpful during your recovery? You say that you got different treatments and, uh, and family has helped you and you got some, uh, different equipment that might be, uh, adaptable that can help you. But what do you think is the most helpful since you're recovering? You know what, honestly, and it's kind of interesting. I mean, physically, the, fa- the physical therapy is huge. Um, I've gone to uh, 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 naturopathy, uh, yeah, um, yeah. which is like a whole li- holistic view of the body. She's helped me out a ton. Like it, it kind of it takes a whole community mm-hmm. to really work through this recovery. And like I said, I'm blessed with my insurance pays for most of it. Yeah, um, massage is huge. I think one thing that people don't get to understand, like some people are like, oh, okay, if I'm doing this recovery, I want to walk again. Just keep working out, working out, working out. But honestly, the biggest thing I needed to deal with was the trauma that the body went through. Oh, sure. And what what helped we like release the trauma of it 
was um, I went to India three times to see my fiance, and I got a lot of Ayurvedic medicine there. Okay. And what they do is they do a lot of like deep tissue massages. So I was there for 20 days. I had two massages a day with this um, specific oils that have different uh, types of medicines in them, all natural. And so that really helped me release a lot of trauma from the body. Um, And then also like going to a psychologist, um, like really like kind of expressing myself. Um, I actually really like uh, trying to really totally accept like the pleasant moment mm-hmm. and I find like the more that you resist um like accepting who you are and accepting the paralysis um that's really what makes life hard that's so, a very that's a very good uh good way to put it and I think that's a great outlook mm-hmm. yeah again you, we can tell you're yeah. a teacher <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah that you're 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 born to teach mm-hmm. oh thank you thank you I I do love it <laughs> So, I mean, I just, I really think, like, accepting, like, that present moment and, like, and I didn't even know how great it was to go to, like, a psychologist and talk everything out with somebody who doesn't know anybody else. I just think it's it's was really nice to, like, release, like, different emotions. Like, I never really cried before my accident. I finally, like, learned how to, like, uh, just really express myself and really, like, enjoy crying and releasing, like, those emotions that... I've had, and honestly, I've even been able to release trauma even from further in the past. Oh, wow. Uh, even in just, like, my accident because of this process that I've been through. Jenny, you and I uh, actually met through an organization I've been with for a while called Dive Heart. Um, we do adapted scuba diving for people with disabilities. Uh, a couple of questions. One, how do you think or has that helped you? Um Breathing underwater, uh, being on um, compressed air underwater, uh, how, how do you think that has helped you with your recovery? And I know you alluded to it earlier, but what other organizations uh, do you work with? Uh, well, first of all, Dive Heart. Like, I th- before my accident, I don't even think I would have thought about doing scuba diving, to be honest. I guess because it's super expensive. Like, it's a really expensive sport <laughs> to do. Um, so, like, scuba diving is like, I found like a new freedom with it, you know, like you can't move like you're kind of trapped. Yeah. You're like trapped in a chair, like most of your days. So like, um, to be in the water and then to like be able to breathe while you're underwater is just super amazing. Like it actually also gets you to that like meditative state, like super fast. Well, if you're not at that meditative state, then your your buoyancy is off. So you kind of have to get to like a really super calm mm-hmm. uh, state so that you can uh, actually dive and float around and right. like really re- relax totally. Um, so diving is kind of the opposite of a lot of sports I've done. Like the less you try, the better you exactly. dive. <laughs> can, can I ask you one more quick question? Have you been on any of the trips to... Uh, either Cozumel or to Florida Keys yet? With yeah, I went down. Um, yeah, I actually got a trip to them. Um, it was like fully paid. I just had to get the plane ticket down, and they certified me as adaptive diver. Oh, fantastic. So I went down to the Keys, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've gone down there several times with my students, um, and one of the, the biggest things when you talk about, like, the, the freedom and all that is we've had, uh, I particularly recall a student who... Uh, was paralyzed at the cervical level. So from basically the, the the neck down, he had very little movement. And with uh, neutral buoyancy, we had him standing erect at the bottom of the ocean, and the current was like walking him along the bottom of the ocean. It was it was phenomenal. So, and, yeah, and he and his amazing. family were just like in tears because parts of his body were moving, albeit in the water, but parts of his body were moving that have not moved since the accident. Yeah, it's just, it's a, it's phenomenal. I actually practice walking now with dive heart in the water. When I, when I, I go once a month and they'll uh, support me practice walking the, on the last, bottom of the pool now. Exactly. The last time I saw you, I said, I still need to dive with you because I see you in the pool all the time, but I'm usually with someone <laughs> else. So maybe I'll be with you yeah, walking right. underwater next month. Yeah, let's do it. I'd love it. 
And what other organizations? Uh, you mentioned it earlier, but um, it would be great to hear it again, some of the other organizations. Yeah. yeah, so what I think is, like, really interesting is, like, I feel like I can do stuff, like, for free every day of the week in my in my situation. It's just really a blessing to, like, live in Chicago and have all of these amazing organizations. So there's Dare to Try. They offer um, practices, like, three days a week between – they do uh, hand cycling practices. They do swim practices. They also have push practices, which is like um, a push chair that you would use to race in the triathlon. Mm -hmm. um, so I did do a triathlon with them in 2017. Um, so and it was really fun. But then I started kind of focusing a little bit more on my recovery. But I still will go and I swim with them. But I also, I walk in the pool. Mm -hmm. I go to their practices and they're like, oh, if you, whatever you want to do. So they're just like super supportive. Uh, and it's not like you, you don't even have to like do a triathlon. They just want people with disabilities to get out and get active. Mm -hmm. So they're like super supportive. Um, I also go to Next Steps. It's in Willow Springs. Okay. They're a specific, um, have you guys heard of them? I, no, I, ha I haven't heard okay. of them and they're not far from here. I, I'd like to check them out. Yeah, so they actually specialize in spinal cord injuries. They also offer, like, bench and bike um, club, like, on uh, Thursday nights. And they also have fitness classes that they offer. Um, and then there's Adaptive Adventures. Uh, mm -hmm. Through Adaptive Adventures, they have, like, a program where they'll take you camping. And they have a ton of volunteers to help you do everything that you thought you could never do. Um, have you gone have skiing with them? I don't mean to interrupt. Yes. <laughs> you did oh, downhill wow. skiing it's amazing wow. yeah so i tried mono skiing it's, it's a little bit rough i need to, i need to do it again i haven't done it for a couple of years now so they do mono skiing they do they do water skiing like they do kayaking mm -hmm. they have just so much to offer um so anything that you would want to try out they have different programs for it um, and then a couple of other things, I was actually able to get my own hand cycle through the Kelly Brush Foundation. They sponsor, uh, they give you grants for athletes that either I, so I got two grants from them. Actually, I got one grant for a hand cycle that I have now, and then uh, I got another grant from them. So now I have my own BCD for scuba diving Wonderful. and my own wetsuit. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. That's fantastic. Yeah, and then there's also the Challenged Athletes Fund. Uh, I got some money from them also that went towards my hand cycling. Okay. And then, of course, Shirley Ryan Ability Lab, their fitness center, um, they have a lot to offer there. They do the hand cycling practices. They have an outdoor hand cycling practice. Um, yeah, so, I mean, there's just a lot of options in Chicago area. It's really amazing. Yeah, Chicago is definitely... Um rehab focus yes exactly i'm going to switch gears a little bit and ask uh what specific challenges do you face as a woman with a spinal cord injury and how do you adapt or if you don't mind explaining yes yeah, so i think some of the major things and last time i checked in the statistics probably not super uh super exact right now but women only make up 12% of the spinal cord population. I think it's more now because um, women are starting to do more of the similar things that men do. Mm -hmm. So that's why the women's spinal cord population is kind of increasing recently. Um, so one other thing is catheterization. Um, it's a little bit harder for us because anatomically, it's a little bit harder to get to the urethra. Mm -hmm. um, so part of that is, is like you have to take the pants all the way off. Uh, and then all the way on. So I've invented something called the easy access pants, um, which I've been trying to get out there because so women have, women have a couple of options, right? So you can have a surgery that reroutes um, the urethra where the pee comes out. It, it'll reroute it through your bladder and, or through your uh, like belly button. So, so they'll okay. reroute the right. bladder to the belly button so then you have it's called a stoma mm -hmm. uh, inside the belly button so then you can catheterize through like your stomach area so that way you don't have to worry about taking the pants on and off right so that's one of the struggles and then obviously as women we don't have as much upper body um mass and muscles 
So there can be a lot more challenges with taking the pants off as well. So that's why I invented the easy access pants, which is a zipper um, in the crotch. So that way you don't, you're not taking the pants on and off every time. Yeah, I, I kind of wonder I if the astronauts uh, probably have something already f- the, like their, that, right? Their suits have vacuum. Oh, they have vacuum. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. Never mind. Things you don't want to <laughs> Things I don't want to get into. <laughs> <laughs> they used to have like a, um, a yeah. yeah, just absorbent so, yeah, so, material, it, but now it's vacuum. Yeah. So it, uh, are you finding with the um, easy access pants that you designed, uh, are you finding a lot of, uh, I know there's need out there, but are you finding mm-hmm. a lot of people interested in, in, in purchasing these? You know, possible side so job I've maybe? Not, so, so yeah, I've been working with a few people and I do have, I have an Etsy um, so I do have a patent for it. So it oh, is, it was, I, I first, yeah, at first I was like, I don't know, maybe this already exists and nobody knew. Mm-hmm. So I had them do a patent search. And then I do have like a year, like a preliminary patent. So I don't have the 20 year utility patent yet. Mm-hmm. So ideally I would like to try to find somebody to help me pay for that one. Cause that's the one that's costly. So right now um, I'm working with a couple of women. Um, they are definitely useful and I've sold several pairs. Um, out there, um, there's some, there, it's kind of trying to get the word out there about them, Mm -hmm. uh, to women that need them. So I do have a, I have a presentation that I'm going to have with Schwab Medical, uh, Rehabilitation on March 4th. So I'm going to try to help introduce it out there. Great. That's great. Yeah. So it's kind of trying to get the word out there. The people that use them love them though. And um, so I have one lady that she's buying her second pair from me. She's like, oh, these are great. I have another woman in Canada who has a young uh, daughter that has spina bifida that started using them too. Oh, wonderful. Super. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I was just thinking like with um, the Paralympics coming up, that would be a great um, place to feature such a product. Right. Yeah. Because I'm sure that, you know, athletes, yeah. 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 Um, now, Jenny, what additional tips, hints, or helpful advice do you have for our listeners? Um, I think I think uh, well, this pro- well specifically for people who are listeners that are in like my similar situation. I just think it's really important to find ways to release the trauma from the body, okay. be it massage, meditation, or finding a psychologist. Like I think that's been a huge part of my recovery. Recovery, and then I just think never give up. Like wanting to walk again, um, always send positive messages to your body that hey, you're gonna walk again. You're healing. I think that self talk is like really important to like keep your body and your cells in that really healthy mm-hmm. condition. Because sure. mm-hmm. uh, the body it, it wants to heal again just naturally. Right. And then I think some. Uh, and I think from my friends too, I think accepting help from strangers is like not a sign of weakness, but a sign of building awareness and community. Mm-hmm. A lot of people are like, no, I just want to do everything independently. But I learned through the process that the more I let people help me and the more I share my story, like the more the community and society opens up and like is able to really understand what it's like to have be uh, disabled, you know, because it's really um I, I i just think it's so inspiring i've met so many people with disabilities now and they just inspire me every day and i just don't think people see like i don't think society sees people with disabilities in this empowering and inspiring life that we should see them in mm-hmm. right right mm-hmm. very good uh, well we'd like to thank you for taking the time to join us today and talk with us about your story how can our listeners learn more about you and especially your accessible clothing line? Um, so I'm creating, I have a website. It's called projectawaken.us. Um, it's very, it's in its very beginning stages. So um, I'm working on the website. The website's going to have all of the nonprofit organizations I work with and their mm-hmm. links. And then I'm going to have a calendar on there actually too of all those organizations and their different dates. So if people want to be active, there'll be a calendar link so that they can see all the different activities. Great. So ideally, because I'm really in the beginning phases of building this, is that the, I'll sell the easy access pants and the money I make from that, I'll be able to put into kind of a nonprofit 
into building activities for people with spinal cord injuries so they can really get out of the house. So that's one of my big plans. That's wonderful. Give it back. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. That's uh, that's amazing. You're a real inspiration. Um, and thank you again for joining us today. We really appreciate you taking the time. Thanks. If, if our listeners have any questions or comments related to today's show, they can contact us at podcastdx at yahoo.com, through our website, podcastdx.com, on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, or Instagram. And if you have a moment to spare, please um, leave a review wherever you get your podcast. As always, please keep in mind that this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified healthcare provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition or treatment and before undertaking a new healthcare regime. And never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something you've heard on this podcast. Till next week.